Hello! You want to learn how to use ombre fabrics and make beautiful quilts with ease? Stay with me and I will share with you the magic of working with ombres and you'll feel like a color pro. Ombres plus color is total quilt magic for me. We're going to go through this video and learn more about ombres. I'd like you to be comfortable with color. I would like you to learn about tints and tones more than you already know. And I want you to get fantastic results. And this will happen when we unleash the magic of ombre fabrics because they're beautiful to work with, nothing to shy away from, and we're going to delve in with a beginner project from my book called Modern Madras Table Topper. And it's a very uh, kind of approachable first project because it just uses three fabrics on one side. And we're going to dial down in, you're going to learn some skills, and then those skills you can use and apply them to other projects in the book. So let's dig into color and value here. I have the Modern Madras Table Runner, and this is the first project in my book. And you can see that it goes from light all the way down to dark. The other side also is light to dark, but in a slightly different way. Today we're just going to focus on this side. And I'm going to walk us through value and color. So if we look at this, let's just talk about this first. We can see what's happening here. The left side of the table runner starts light and the whole thing crescendos down, gradients down, ombres down into the darkest dark. The secondary thing we have going on here, which is really interesting and makes the piece dynamic, and what we'll talk about today, is while this is going light to dark, we have a transparency effect happening in the center. Also going light to dark, however, the values and the color range horizontally are talking to one another and they're relating to each other so that it makes a really beautiful piece. And this is a beginner project that you're going to learn putting this together and how we'll move the squares around and then you apply these skills to the projects that are later in the book, which is like the Dawn Star and the um, Sunset Lake. I only used three ombres for this whole piece. I've got this ombre, and these are full range ombres. If you do a like mirrored range ombre and you wanna get the same amount of depth, you might need to pick more colors. And then we use this ombre, which is like the pink all the way into the deep chocolates. And I'm also using this ember ombre, which is really beautiful with the dark red to the very soft, even this light buttery yellow. So let's talk about the, the color of what's in these three ombres. We've got one, and two, and three. And I love using my color wheel which is here. So what's important to do here for me visually is to, to, is to step back on these brights. These brights I find distracting. So I use a little cutout circle of white to get rid of those bright colors. And I can put this in the center. So now what we're working with is all of these beautiful tints and tones. These are all tints and tones and these are shades. And this is the palette I find the most exciting because it's just not as, as typical. And when you look at this modern Madras tablecloth, we're right like in that range. So there you see that we're going from these colors in here, the tones and the tints, all through these deep reds, even down to like these browns over here. And then we've got the light yellows. Maybe we don't have as much of those greens, but maybe we're more like, we're 
They're more like in here. And so this is what we're going for. And this is what I find so exciting and so beautiful about ombres because you're getting that range in just a few fabrics. So now we're gonna play with the actual fabrics and show you how I lay this out. And follow along with me and see how we play with the value. The, the, one of the secrets of working with ombre fabrics is definitely cut more than you need because that's what's the fun part. That's what you want to um, start playing and you don't want to have to stop playing to cut more. So this is like a kid in the candy shop that you've got all your colors laid out, you have more than you need, and then you start to play piecing your blocks together to get the feeling that you want. So I'm gonna start with the middle panel and work down and build the outside as I'm working down. Now this is not gonna be exactly like the one I just showed you because I'm doing it a different time and I have a different feeling and I have a different kind of, you know, day. So I will not be doing the exact same thing, but it'll be similar. So I wanna have my center line set up, say three blocks there. So I've got my lightest of the lights of the entire group, my palest value. And then I'll put pinks on each side so these are a little bit darker than this. And I'm gonna start working down that way. A little bit darker, a little bit darker. And then in between here, I get to choose whatever bars I want. And I want some graphic dynamic things happening, some graphic dynamic kind of punches of color. So I'll put a dark one here. And I feel like choosing this Let's try that there. And I'll go for maybe this nice strong pink. Now here I'm gonna put, let's see, do I have Okay, these do not have a bar in them, so those go up to here. And then remember, this is my center. And then I'm gonna choose a little darker, darker one. And see how I, see how I turn this from here to here to create that definition between these two blocks? And that's not strong enough. Remember, we're doing that transparency effect, so I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna put a little bit, maybe a little bit deeper. These may move, these may move, but you see how I'm working down the center line. And let's see what color bar is here. I like this pink. So we've got this dark value here. So now I think I wanna put a dark value to balance maybe over here. And then let's try, um, let's try this, like that there. And then we can go light here. I might even wanna go lighter. Let's try that there. And now we're gonna introduce this pink because now this is still a deeper, see how this is still a deeper value than this color? There's more saturation, it's a, also a richer color. Let's try and add these pinks now. The beginning of adding these pinks. And let's add this down here. And this red, again, this red's a little bit deeper than that. So we are playing, playing, playing. And 
And that to me is too close in value. I, I probably wouldn't choose that. I want to go darker. Let's try darker, maybe right there. That color there. And then let's do a little lighter color here. So when we're sitting here playing with it, as you can see how, mm, I'm not sure, I might change maybe this one here. And go down into here. But this is the general idea of how we play and how we manipulate the color. And if for some reason pink's not your jam, then you can take some of the pink out and replace it with a lighter color. And then this, of course, has to go darker if this, because these are two the same value now. So then we'd maybe change this out and we put this color in or this color in. So that's to show you, we could even go here. And there's all, there's basically all kinds of puzzles that you can do and playing with it. Um, I think maybe that's where I want to be at. And then I think I might go a little deeper with this one and maybe bring this back in. So again, you've got all of this play, play squares that you can, you can have fun with. So that's how you work through your, your light to darker and your light to darker. So with your remaining pieces, continue because now we've got to go into the darks and you bring up these pinks at the very end. So you get an idea of what I'm doing and just continue on. And then you make your blocks and then you sew them together. And all of the information is in the Modern Madras pattern in the book. So definitely get the book and um, make this if you'd like. And if you want to do a whole quilt, just repeat this concept another four times or five times. You have a beautiful lap quilt. I hope this helps you. I hope you understand that there is no wrong way to do it, but the more aware you are of your value changes and the more you pay attention to what's happening, the, I think maybe the results will be really great and you'll enjoy the process. One other key factor, in addition to cutting more than you need, is definitely back away, walk out of the room, take a picture with your smartphone, but you want to be able to walk away and then boom, come back and look at it and walk away and boom, come back and look at it so it feels fresh. And that's when you see, oh, that color's not right there. I'm going to switch it. Once you've got that going on, you sew it together and you stitch it and then you have um, a beautiful quilt. Dawn Star is a really fun quilt to make. It is going to require you to put the work in with your value and color understanding. And you're just going to have to keep playing, play and play and play, because when you look at this quilt, it ombres, the ombres ombre. Like, <laughs> let's get serious here. The ombres are ombreing. So um, it's really fun and it's, it's a little more complex. But if you stick to it, you will get this effect with just nine fabrics. If you're not using a full range ombre, like if you're not using my Sky Collection and you're using other fabulous ombres on the market, you might have to buy more than nine, depending on the intensity of value change from the very lightest to the very darkest. Cutting all of your pieces out in advance is something that I talk about in my book and that is um, something I highly recommend. And then the other thing that you're going to want to be conscious of is where you're going to put your accent blocks. Um, I definitely created accents in the quilt where your eye gravitates to. And this is important to give the uh, quilt like some bounce and some flash and some focus. The, um, one, of the, one of the fabrics is just right here, is this beautiful opal color. And that was one of my favorites cut up. You'll find that you are, are going to gravitate towards different ombres. And so the ones that you gravitate towards 
cut more of that up. One of the key elements that I want to teach about the value and the color is that everything speaks differently to you than it does to me or it does to her or it does to him. So it's so personal and I want to give you the permission to focus on the colors you love, the value range you love. You might want this whole thing to be really, really soft and you might not gravitate toward the really dark colors or you might want something really moody. So do what you like. This is definitely not a copycat quilt, but it's a copycat technique. So once again, I've got my favorite color wheel, which I love to use. And let's talk about the color in the Dawn Star quilt. So I'm going to put this back on because I tend not to use the super, super brights. And I like to get them out of my visual view. And we don't have any greens in here, so I'm going to block away the greens. And this is just to show you kind of how I come down to a color palette. Granted, the, the ombres themselves dictated what I was going to use, but it's good for you to understand what we're using. So we've got this range of blues that goes into the purples. We have a touch of pink. So we're coming here with more of the tints versus the tones. We've got a lot of the purples and we don't have as many reds. So if I were to block out some of these reds right in here, we don't, we have a little bit of peach, but not much, but that's essentially, that's essentially our palette right there. And maybe not as much as this dark pink down here. So that's a nice way to look at color. And if you find that pleasing, then those are the ombres that you want to pull together. You could have nine ombres that are completely different. And then you might, you know, choose to do like the greens and the, and the warm greens. And you could go on that kind of palette. I mean, the world's your oyster. Your color is fun. And I encourage you to explore whatever you want to explore and speak through, communicate through color. This is the back of the quilt, of the Dawn Star quilt, and this shows you the ombres that I used. So this is a nice thing to do as well. Make your back special. Get that extra yardage and show, the, show, show your family, show your friends, tell your story. I use these fabrics to get everything that's going on in the front. I cut them up and I sewed them back together and they look really different. Sunset Lake is the final quilt I'm going to talk about in today's video and the value and the color change is equally important. It's another way to do the work and to learn. The key in this quilt is making the ombres really explode for you, really making them work. They're so beautiful that we kind of hate to cut them up sometimes. And in this quilt, you don't cut them up very small. You're not doing small piecing. So let's talk about this, lay it out, and take a look. Sunset Lake has 16 ombres in it. And if you look down here with me and at all the colors, we are making these beautiful ombres do all the work. And it's big scale piecing. It's using my kites and large triangle from the octagon shimmer pattern. And this is the fourth pattern in the series that uses those templates. And the glory of this is that it's fun and it goes fast because you have such big piecing. The keys in getting this lake to be reflective and this feeling of water and sky is again, working with your values. So I've got my deep, deep, like kind of mulberry and cerise and these midnight blues. And so these are dark values. There's must be mm, easily like eight to 10 value changes just in the water. But see how I add a little sparkle, like a reflection in that green there. And then when you come to your strong line in the horizon, that is key to separate water from sky. And the very lightest, palest part of the sky has still some deeper values in it, but not a lot. And as you cascade down through the atmosphere, you get the glowing sunset popping in these orange colors. And the other key point that I want to talk to you about is adding these pale pinks 
See how these are really high contrast to the watercolor? These give you that kind of sun in the dappling light reflecting off the water. This also requires work. You will cut out more than you need and you will be playing with each block. So when you go into the book and you read through the directions, read them twice, take your time and have a blast with it. And again, change colors if you want, do a similar color palette if you want, just have fun. You can use any of these colors, any colors you want to do a Sunset Lake look. You could do them in your greens, you could do them in yellows. The key is have these beautiful ombres work for you. You don't have to cut them in, up into small pieces and, and put them back together. Use big bold strokes, have fun with it, and uh, I hope they light your ombre fire. So let's talk about storing your fabrics, storing your ombre fabrics. They're gonna be different on how you keep them in your stash. I have a beautiful pile of my ombre half yard cuts and they look like this. And why they look like this is because I fold them differently than I fold my other fabrics. This is so I can see what each ombre is. How do I do this, you ask? So you're coming from the store, you've bought a half piece, a half yard piece of ombre. And the way they're gonna fold it up is probably something like this. And it looks kind of brownie purplish. But you know there's a lot of cool stuff going on there. And you don't want to put it in your stash not knowing all the cool stuff going on. So let's unfold it. Ooh, look how pretty it is. Look at that, all this stuff going on. And we're gonna fold it so that you can see what's going on. So we take the middle and we're doing salvage to salvage and you're folding it in half. And then you're gonna fold it, but instead of going all the way down, you're gonna stop to let this little bit of yellow peekaboo through. And then you're gonna fold it again, revealing the darker purple. And then you can fold it. And when you do this with all the ombres that you buy, you want to stack them I know this might not be for everyone. It is a little bit fastidious, but it shows you what you have in your stash. And working with your paint colors, you know, as an artist or your fabrics as a quilt artist, you need to see what you have. So when you fold them like this, obviously you have more bulk here than you do here. So the way I keep them in my shelf is I go bulk on this side, bulk on that side, bulk on this side, Bulk on that side. So I have folded all my half yard cuts so that I can see what I have. So when I go to make and sew and cut with them, it's really clear what's in my stash. I just want to leave with a message that if you want to stay just enjoying color and not doing too much delving in, about value and color, that's fine because these fabrics will cut up and they'll work for you. They will do the work because all that color has been done for you on a yard of fabric. If you do want to get more into color, into value, do the work and studying, there is a spread in the book about value and about color that you'll learn more and you can go as deep as you want. Um, and I just, Really, my, my hope for you is to have a blast and to just have other people enjoy the fun and join me on this great adventure of ombres. So that's it for today's video. I hope you learned a lot about ombres. I hope you understand what an ombre is and the beautiful color that they can bring into your studio or into your quilting life. I've got 30 fabrics that are available at your favorite quilt shop. You can find the Ombre Quilts book at ctpub.com or also at your favorite quilt shop. And if you have any questions, please put them in the, in the content below. I do read them, I do look at them, and I love connecting with all you people out there who also love to quilt and work with color. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Be sure to subscribe to CNT's YouTube channel below and stay creative. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Delta Don, what's that flower? <laughs>